Hey, this is Timmy G. Welcome to the 23rd edition of my tutorial series on DJ Pro 2 for Mac by Algorithm. Today's tutorial will show you one way to record a set in DJ Pro 2. There are many ways to record sets, and I will be making more videos on other ways in the future. Even though this is a tutorial series on DJ Pro 2, this tutorial is applicable to any DJ software using any DJ controller or media player. Let's get started. So the general idea of this method is to send our main output back into our computer from our controller using the uh, headphone jack and recording it into a digital audio workstation using the line in function on our laptop. So the first thing we want to do is open system preferences on our laptop and then go to sound. Next, we want to go to sound output and select use audio port for sound input. Then we want to plug our output wire into our headphone jack. Uh, and just a heads up, for this method to work, we will need an RCA to 3.5 millimeter jack. That's the same as a 1 8 inch jack. The next thing we want to do is actually open up um, our digital audio workstation. Um, I'm going to use GarageBand for this case because this is a software that's for Mac and GarageBand comes free with every Mac. I usually use Logic Pro for this, but I, not, I know not everyone has the $200 software. So I'm going to open up GarageBand right now. We're going we're gonna to want to click Empty Project. And right here, we want to make sure that our instrument is connected with built-in input. If you don't see that right here, you can click right here and then just select it. This built-in input is going to be our line input that we just plugged into our headphone jack. Now we want to also make sure that we have this input one and two. This makes our make sure that our recording will be in stereo and not mono. So we want input one and two. And then hit create. And now we want to go down here to plugins. Unfortunately, GarageBand um, has all of its default tracks with these plugins. And our MIDI controller actually controls some of these plugins. If you look at the bottom right here, my crossfader is actually controlling this reverb. So if that was the case, then it wouldn't sound great. So we would just want to turn all of these plugins off. So we're going to go down here to plugins and then scroll. And then where it says channel EQ, we're going to turn it off. And then master echo, I'm going to uncheck that and master reverb. And then we should be all set. So now I'm going to hit the record button. If you don't know what GarageBand is, I'm going to show you just quickly. Um, this is the record button right here, this big red dot. But when I click it, we hear this clicking noise. Okay, This is the metronome. So I want to turn that off. I don't want to hear that in my uh, mix. So I'm going to hit the space bar right now to stop this. And then I'm going to highlight it and then hit delete on my keyboard to get rid of that file. And I'm going to go back to the start. And then I'm going to hit record right now to get started on my, on my DJ set. And I'm, I'm going to go back to DJ Pro right now. And I have get back and start it uploaded. And I'm just going to do a very simple mix right here. And that was just a basic example. Obviously, your set would probably be longer than that. So I'm going to go back to GarageBand right now. And now to stop the recording, you can either hit this, or you could have hit the space bar on your keyboard. And before we listen to our set, uh, I just want to turn this reverb down. Um, it must have gotten turned back on when um, I was DJing. 
So I'm gonna click down here, just turn it all the way down so it doesn't affect our sound. And now here's what our recording sounds like. So this sounds really good, but the only issue is that it's a lot quieter than um, like a regular song we'd listen to. So the way to fix that is to put on a limiter. So I am gonna go to the master down here, and then I'm gonna turn on the limiter. I'm gonna turn off the EQ, we don't need it. And then I'm gonna put, push the gain up to maybe about plus 10 decibels. You don't want it to be too loud because um, then it will start to distort, but you want it loud enough where um, it won't sound too quiet relative to the other tracks in your library. So when I started up here, it's much louder. You can see this meter knob shows us that um, we're closer. We might be able to push it up a little bit louder. Yeah, right when we're about to get to the reds, that sh should be good. Now, one thing we might want to do is to cut out all the empty space that we have. So to do that in GarageBand, I'm going to go up to where we started, right about there. And then I'm going to hit Command-T, I believe. Yep, that will split our track. And then I just clicked and deleted it. Now I'll drag this to the beginning. And then I'll go to the end of this. Then I'll use Command-T again. And then we're ready to share our track. So to share our track, I'll just get out of this right here. I'm going to go to Send Song to iTunes. And then you can title it, Artist, Composer, Album, blah, blah, blah. Right here you can pick your quality. I would suggest this highest quality, um, 256 kilobits per second. That is going to be as good as GarageBand can do it while compressing it. If you're using like a WAV file to DJ with, then you could use do the uncompressed. But most of us are probably dealing with MP3s, which the maximum um, kilobit per second rate, bit rate I should say, is 320 kilobits per second. So 256 is very close to that. So we should just keep it like that. Anyway, hit share. And then your iTunes will open. And then your track will start to play. So that's about it. If you like this video or if it helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or video suggestions, be sure to leave a comment. If you want to see more content like this and check out my original music, DJ performances, or sound design tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah.